In today's video, we are talking about the most meaningful update that Apple announced to their iWatch design. I will be analyzing this change not just from a designer's perspective, but also as an Apple user. Hello everybody, my name is Simon and on this channel I explore the whole world of design, sharing insights from architecture, game design, product design, graphical design, amongst many more things. I dive into design theory and design philosophy as well as doing specific deep dive design reviews just like this one. If you find that this video has offered you any valuable insights, any, any at all, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not being picky, anything. Just make sure that you click that like button as it helps with YouTube promoting this video to others. If you wanna make sure you don't miss any of my videos as I hope you do, make sure you subscribe to my channel because that also helps with the whole YouTube algorithm thing. And quite frankly, with my self-esteem. We're talking about the latest updates for the iWatch. In this latest Apple update, way more things were presented than just the ones I will be focusing on today. What we're talking about today is just what caught my eye as a designer and Apple user related to the iWatch. We will be taking a look at their latest iWatch design changes through an intersectional lens of product and graphical design. The main update to the iWatch design that caught my eye was the new single hand double tap gesture. A gesture that expands how you interact with your iWatch by letting you use your watch hand to turn on and off applications, scroll through content, snooze at notifications, take calls, amongst many more things. This gesture is in addition to the already integrated list of gestures that let you interact with your iWatch. There are two ways that I like to think about screen-based product design interactions. The ones that are screen-based and the ones that are object-based. Screen-based interactions are all the interactions that depend on you directly touching the screen to be able to manipulate the content. On the iWatch, these would be the existing gestures like the single click, double click, and screen swipes. All of these require you to interface with the screen directly. Object-based interactions, on the other hand, are those object movements that let you modify the screen content through the device being manipulated in some manner, like the digital crown with its scroll and push button, the wrist rise to turn on the iWatch display, or the display hand cover which lets you snooze or turn off notifications by putting your hand over the watch. This new gesture, the single hand double tap, is an addition to the object-based category of the interactions. but it is a single hand object interaction that permits you a greater range of screen content manipulation than any other of the previous single hand interactions has been able to offer. The single hand double tap gesture controls the primary button of the watch and when activated, it launches a smart track in your iWatch. You can use the double tap gesture to scroll through the widget stack just as if you were using the digital crown. This is very helpful in various ways as a feature in a product design like the iWatch. First, it offers a more granular control of the device through the object interactions, which I think is a more natural way for us humans to interact with our environment in general, rather than information being presented in a 2D format through a screen. The gesture itself is a very natural and comfortable hand gesture that is giving meaning within the context of the iWatch design. A simple gesture that its use gets amplified thanks to the contextual design of the iWatch where one button, depending on what application or interface the system is displaying at that moment, can realize different commands that are easy to execute and intuitive to interpret. The way the iWatch is able to detect the single hand double tap is possible by the neural engine in Series 9, which processes data from the accelerometer and gyroscope to determine the minute changes in blood flow in your wrist when tapping your fingers together. This is a feature that built on top of all the technology and design that has been done on the iWatch for all the health applications. This is a good example of how efforts on one design domain can be used in another design domain to push design boundaries in general. Of course, it helps when it is the same company. So keep that in mind. So what do I think about this? I think overall, it is a great addition. It is one more way to manipulate the content of the device through a very natural and comfortable human gesture, a feature that really upgrades the usage and everyday practicality of the iWatch as its constant use just got easier. You can manipulate the watch content with the watch hand. This feature is another way to interact with your iWatch that results in changing the dynamics of the usage of the device 
So I'm looking forward to how non-Apple developers start using this new gesture to have us interact with their content in new and innovative ways that Apple hasn't even considered yet. Yo, free market. Thanks. A good case for this would be games. iWatch has a very challenging scenario for game design. The iWatch has a relatively small screen where a good portion of it gets visually blocked when you have to interact with it. With this gesture, the single hand double tap, the screen can now always be completely unobstructed while being able to be interacted with, which opens up the possibilities for what new games can be made on the iWatch because of this new gesture. This gesture also reflects on how the iWatch is getting away from being a watch and is exploring and finding how this device on the wrist can start being its own thing and break away from the mold of what a watch is, which I think is the same process the smartphones have gone through to the point where we interact and use the smartphones for way more things than as a phone and they look completely different from its ancestors. And this is a totally normal and expected thing in the design world, this design progression. And the same thing can be seen on the car's design evolution. Uh, a car today does not look like a horse carriage. The one thing I wished I saw that I didn't see in this update for the iWatch is that I would like to see the digital crown gone, replace, finito. And I know, I know, Apple, Apple, just hear me out, okay? Something like a touchpad side slider, instead of the digital crown, a vestige of the watch ancestors, uh, would be way better. The iWatch should have an area to its side where a touchpad is located. People can use this touchpad to tap, to select, and slide to scroll. It could even have the 3D push feature and a, a sophisticated haptic feedback system integrated for scrolling where the speed and scale of the scroll is communicated by how fast or slow the haptic system is giving feedback to the user. This haptic feedback would also keep the tactile component that the digital crown offers when interacting with the iWatch. If this touchpad side slider is mirrored to both sides of the iWatch, now users could use any combinations of actions applied to both sides of the iWatch on these sliders, like tapping and sliding on both sides resulting in completely new interactions like being able to rotate content by using both sliders from opposite directions. I think the digital crown is a vestige from the watch archetype, from where the iWatch design emerged from, and I do think it will be eventually taken out from the iWatch design and replaced by something else. Or I could be totally wrong and it will be there forever. I have never owned an iWatch because I have never seen the value of it. In my opinion, the iWatch is very limited and clunky as to what I, I would use it for. I know it's very helpful for people that do sports and whatnot for it, all its biomeasuring capabilities, but that was not enough for me to get one. But with this change and what this change signals, breaking away from the archetype of the watch design and starting to become its own thing, it's looking more convincing for what I would use it for now. So I don't know, might be time to get one. And that is it, my thoughts, my insights for the latest Apple updates to the iWatch design. If you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. These very minute, easy to do actions on your part help me in a very, very big and massive way to help YouTube you know, to convince YouTube to show this video to other people. If you like my insights for this video, there is another video when I talk about Apple's Vision Pro design, and you can see that somewhere here. If you're interested in architecture, I have another video for that here. And if you're interested in game design, I have another video for that. With that said, I will see you in the next video.